All I do is watch food. <laughs> you sit and watch, just scroll through though. And I want all the things, and I have a whole thing with like London food and I can't find it. A whole thing of reels. Like reels that were like people in London. Oh, okay. And then I was like, I want to eat those things, but now I don't know how to get to it. I've been saving foods that I want to eat for like a month. Are we taping? Yeah. Okay, but good. But this is cool. This no, this is, is, this, this is the best way to introduce the interview that's about to happen. Yeah. By talking about your lost food reels. I know. Are you somebody who just sits and scrolls through the no, thing? No. My... My life is much better when I'm not on Instagram or social okay. media. So my goal when I when I post is to get out and get off as quick as possible. Yeah. Because once you start scrolling, you do. Here's the thing. I've been in Europe for six weeks now, and it's been really, really nice. Yeah. Because my algorithms are changed now. Like in in when I'm home, it's like all LA bullshit. It's like everybody masturbating to themselves. Like you know what I mean? That's essentially that's yeah. essentially what it is. <laughs> so it's just like it's like I just get mad and yeah. I like it. Make, it, it first makes me mad that I exist in this industry, and and sometimes it also makes me jealous, right? So there's like anger that there's this bullshit like hamster wheel yeah. race and then jealousy because I'm actually on the race. It's like these both things happening at the same time. So you're jealous of other people that you see it. But I'm also like don't want to be doing what they're doing at the same time. Yeah. And I also like, so it's like, yeah, so there's like all these weird things happening at the same time. Okay. So now that I've been in Europe and I just see like... It's completely different. It's completely different. And, and I've been so much... <laughs> and so I've been back on Instagram a little more because of like, oh, I'm not like on this weird emotional yeah, yeah, roller coaster yeah. when I just like was trying to post a show. Fair. Or a, a word about a show or something. Anyways, is that the question that you wanted to ask? But it wasn't, but that will do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to introduce you. Okay. So... Uh, welcome to On The Bed With Me. Today I'm in Camden with my friend, singer-songwriter, Tom Cross. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> I'm also going to take my glasses off because I think I look cuter without glasses. Really? Yeah, I think so. I like your glasses. Although less intelligent, maybe. How do I look? Yeah, you look cute with. You, with or you look like uh, there's a filter, like we're like, we're like uh, <laughs> That's probably a good in a science fiction movie and I just took drugs or something like that okay that's how i feel most of the time generally um <laughs> tell me mm -hmm. what what are we doing in a holiday inn in camden this weekend i have a show at the camden club tomorrow which is sunday the 5th of november and this will not be out in time. So no. all of you missed it. <laughs> it was amazing. I'm actually going to put a clip from the show, probably around here. We make our way out to the bow. There's only one thing missing. There's only one thing missing. It's you. Oh, I wish you were here. Oh, 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 how I wish you were here. I wish you were here. Oh, 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 I wish you were here. I wish you were here. Oh, 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 how I wish you were here with us. Yeah, the best, the people best, best, show of, best show of your life. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's been great. I've been, you've been everywhere. I've been everywhere? Well, you've been kind of on a, a European tour. I've been, yeah, so I've been on a European tour that also was just like a lot of non-touring. Okay. It was like, I was in Barcelona, I was went to a wedding in, in Galicia, in okay, Spain. Nice. I spent a, little, a couple of days in Madrid. Nice. And then I was in Barcelona for three weeks because I think I'm going to want to spend like a good chunk of my year in Barcelona for okay. my life. I want to be like, I don't know. I'm just like, I need something a little different. Right. I don't know what it is yet. But I spent three weeks in Barcelona testing it out. And it might be that. But my husband didn't know that's what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> someone came to visit for the weekend and was like, wait, what? Wait, we're moving here? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that was fun. And then, but it's like, the thing is, it's just so like, uh, the, the quality of life oftentimes in Europe is just yeah. so much better. Mm. It's like, 
You're, uh, so London's a shit show. Yeah. This is probably <laughs> like probably not the right example. No. Right? Not the best. But in Barcelona, I just walked everywhere. Or I got on the train, which took me 10 minutes, and it runs every two and a half yeah, minutes, yeah, yeah. so you're never missing a train. And then I was in Antwerp for a week. I had some shows in Antwerp. Yeah. And I just had this little bike. I could get every single place in that city in eight minutes on a bike. Amazing. What is that? So... So basically, you've been living your life for six weeks, which has been interrupted by doing the odd show. Yeah. Is this <laughs> that's How right. inconvenient. That's, really, that's actually really true. Like, every night, uh, like when, when I was planning this, like, shows would get booked, and I'd be like, motherfucker. Like, I was, like, kind of mad. It's going to ruin my week. <laughs> yeah, this is for, I can't believe I have to work. Uh, but, no, I've been writing a ton, too. Okay. It's been really, it's been really And nice. how, how have the shows been? Have they okay, been everything's been great. Yeah, yeah. Everything's great. Let me tell you something about people in Antwerp. Okay, that's um, this is how they express happiness. <laughs> this is how they express sadness. So mm. it's like, I have no idea how the shows no. went for Was well, this a tough crowd? No, they were great. They're yeah. the sweetest, sweetest people. Every time I would say something that's like, you know, because you're an asshole, because you're British, <laughs> right? Obviously. I'm an asshole because I'm American. <laughs> and every time I would say something mean, they would just be like, I'm sorry? <laughs> and, then, and there's this bit I do in my show where I, like, scream at the audience and swear okay. at them the whole time to, like, motivate them. And I did it, and it was just like this. <laughs> it's like, I was like, um, okay, I get the sense that this isn't going to work. So I had to change my tactics. But, yeah, no, they're, they're super engaged. They're yeah. super interested. They're, the interested is a great word, too, because yeah. all of them really were, like, nice. But... But they don't, they don't have these emotional responses. So as long as they're clapping and they're not you know telling you okay. that you suck, then it's great. Fair. So it was kind of fun. I need to go back to talking about Barcelona. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you been to Barcelona before? A couple times, yes. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like the first time you went and you've decided you want to move there. So, no. But for me, okay, I live in Los Angeles. And yeah. I already made fun of Los Angeles. But I will say... It's also amazing. Right? Yeah. Like every place, every place I'm making fun of also amazing. Yeah. Right? It's like the, the dichotomy of the things is always happening. And the thing is, it's perfect weather every day. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, what am I doing after Los Angeles? But it's also like, move to New York? No. Mm -hmm. Like any place, like winter, like yeah. snow. Oh, no. Rain. No. Mm -mm. Cold. No. It's like, I'm so fucking spoiled. Like, it's just... Unbelievable all the yeah. time. So I was like, Barcelona. Mm. Mm. That's kind of temperate weather, yeah. really different. Like it'd be a whole new adventure. Okay, fair. So if there's a like it's never gonna be London. It's no. never gonna be <laughs> Berlin. It's okay. never gonna be these places where it's like I have to like hide indoors for eight months. Yeah, I'm not, it's so cold. I'm over that. Yeah. I, I grew up in Wisconsin. Fair. Um but yeah, in Berlin. So tell me, yeah, I was going to say tell me about Berlin. Berlin was the opposite. I played this 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 bar, this showcase at the Pepsi Boston Bar, which is um, Schultz. Schultz is the name of the club. So okay, I, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, these people were like me, like like manacle in really? their attention and the responsiveness, and they were like they're like young queer kids yeah, yeah, who yeah. are like totally self-assured and are just like they're just into whatever you're bringing them yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was just like sometimes when I get worried about the future I just like sit in rooms like that and I'm like oh my god like, it's we, gonna be fun we are a-okay an impulse far too strong to keep away from me Berlin is so cool. So, yeah, Berlin is fucking cool. Yeah. But it was like I did have to sit in traffic. Right. And I was like, oof, this doesn't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, this is what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. The, the Uber driver was like, oh, there's always traffic here. I was like, bro, I live in Los Angeles. I get it. <laughs> it was like this bad. I bet it was also really cold. 
Yeah, it was freezing. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, honestly, one day was magic. Okay. Yeah, but then I went to Scotland, freezing, got here, <laughs> less freezing, but still yeah. freezing. It's like, it's been raining for like two weeks, the yeah. last two weeks of my trip, where it's like it was perfect every day in Barcelona. Mm. Yeah. The dream. The dream. The dream. Barcelona is the dream. Barcelona, I think Barcelona is the dream. And also, uh, so I wrote this song called Barcelona. Um, I remember, like I said, I've been writing a lot. And Did you write it while you were in Barcelona? Actually, I wrote it in Antwerp oh, after okay. I left Barcelona. But I started writing the lyrics in Barcelona. Yeah. And um, I think I just want to write, like, queer stories. That's okay. it. I'm, like, sick of caring about other people. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, like, we just have such interesting stories. So this is what happened to me at the gym. Um, I was at the gym, and this gym was great. Yeah. And uh, these two guys were lifting weights. They're, they're doing incline bench presses, and one's spotting the other one. Just two bros at the gym doing their incline bench presses. The one guy finishes, drops his weight, stands up, turns around. And, you know, you typically you like cross. You switch. Yeah. But in that process, the middle of that process, the one guy slid his arm in the small of the other guy's back, pulled him towards him, and kissed him. Oh. Like, so beautifully passionate, lingering kiss. Wow. I've probably been to the gym 10,000 times in my life. Yeah. I've never seen that. Did you drop the weight? So. I, nobody cared. No. Because it's fucking Barcelona. Like, kiss who you want to kiss. Where you want to kiss them, when you want to kiss them. Like, it's like the opposite of that response in Antwerp. It's just yeah. like, have passion about everything all the time. And I was just like, so yeah, so. I bet they were gorgeous as well. They were gorgeous. They were beautiful. I mean, it was like... Perfect. It was perfect. And I just was like... I just was like... Did that just... Did that just happen in the world? And I got to witness it? That's a little bit of magic. It was magic. Yeah. So... I don't... I'm sure that wasn't your question. I, I feel like I've talked about 14... <laughs> I feel like I've talked about 14 things. And it's like... That's oh, fine. Yeah, okay, okay. I want to... But let me ask you. You've got new music. Yes. At the moment. Yes. When you think about the life that you're building Don't get caught up in the thought you're not worth it So you haven't got a paper from an Ivy League So you haven't got a suit coat that's a color green Just remember, everything is for a reason Just remember, every flower has a season The beautiful, the powerful aren't always what they seem The wonderful is underfoot, it's not a mystery in you have Which is this record yes. a proper record like proper. a proper physical record proper yeah tell me about it um <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of remember what it feels like okay it's 15 tracks yeah uh it's super fucking fun it is just like i would call it like positive positive acoustic power pop Okay. That's, that's what nice. I'm gonna call it. Like it's like it's like fun, it's uplifting. Obviously the acoustic guitar is prominent in many of the songs. Yeah. Um, but it's just like uh, it's just like a bundle of joy. I've I've been writing so much and recording so much and I have a studio now at home, which is great, which just means I'm constantly producing mm. music. And the thing about making music is that it's amazing. The thing about releasing music is that it's horrible. Okay. And so I've just been not releasing it. It's just been sitting in my computer. Oh. And then I'm just like, uh, maybe I should release something? What What is so horrible about releasing it? Um, <laughs> so I'm going to sound like a, like a second grader here okay. real quick. It's like... It's, it's really the people's reactions. Yeah. Or lack thereof. Or non-existent it's like it's like it's like about the ego it's all about the ego it's you spend so much time and energy creating a thing yeah and then when you release it you hope that there's a sort of reaction to the said thing and sometimes there is right mm -hmm. into many people there is but but you know as a general rule i think there's sixty thousand songs that are released every day wow. and the idea of like like the world that we live in and, ca and the content creation, how how we are content creators now instead of artists, mm -hmm. right? And it's just about generating this assembly line of, co of non-stop content yeah. so that the algorithm can can put you in 
to people's brains for three and a half seconds. Like, it's like, that's... It's exhausting. It's exhausting and it's not fulfilling. Mm. So for me, um, like, people are loving the record. And the people that listen to the record love the record. You know, but... It's what? My seventh record? Mm. I'm like no spring chicken. I'm not like, why oh, this exciting new guy? Like, it's not, it's not me. So it's like, uh, you have to really just, you have to focus on the, the creation of the craft and the joy in that and release it for you and yeah. be confident in that. And then if somebody likes it, that's a bonus. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm independent. I don't have a label. You know, it's like, there's no guarantee that anybody's going to listen because I post it on social media and it'll get buried mm. because social media just wants you to post the things that are like in their algorithm, which mean nothing to me. Yeah. So, um, but I, how important is, how important is the look and the kind of the image of everything that you put out? Because you've, you've always done like these really strong videos and like, I noticed with this record and I did see this online, that you're sort of unboxing of it and it looks really beautiful. Mm. I know this is kind of super shallow for me to even say it, but you know, as a visual person, to me, that seemed like a really important thing that it, it's like super you open important. it and it's like, oh wow, this looks really cool. And yeah. so how important is that? Super important. And that? I also think that like, you know, it's been, I'm doing this for 17 years now. So it's like, I mean, like, I finally get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like I, I, this is what I wanted it to look like. And yeah. I collaborated on the, on the photo with my friend Dusty Cunningham, who is a brilliant photographer. And he shoots me, he shoots me every year for okay. my calendar. Yeah. But now I want to ask about the calendar as yeah. well. Because this is kind of so like a cult thing that you do. <laughs> so, so silly, yeah. Tell me about the calendar. Uh, I take off my clothes and I take a bunch <laughs> of pictures and it is the most popular thing that I do yeah. every year, which is so ridiculous. And every, <laughs> and every year I'm like, this is my last fucking year. But next year will be 10 years. So maybe wow. I'll stop after 10 years. You probably won't. <sighs> I want to. I just want to eat. Can I just eat and get really fat? Like, can we just do this already? Oh, my God. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's fun. And Dusty and I work really well together. And it's yeah. very smooth. And it's very easy at this point in time. But he shot the album cover. And then my friend Diego has been doing a lot of design work with me. And he's great. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, is that he we just talk about a thing. And then he just goes crazy. Right. And he's like, every time he shows me something, I'm like, that's amazing. Okay. Because we're just both stupid. And so, like, there's no amount of stupid... There's... Okay, so there's this thing... There's this part of my merch that that's... that's um, I have a bunch of children, but they're stuffed animals. Okay. There's one vacuum cleaner. But, like, <laughs> we're, like, they, like, exist in my life, and we talk about them, and, like, they, like, have personalities, and Mike and I fight and stuff, okay. and they, like, are, like, you know, kids taking sides. It's really stupid. But I I got a, a new a new kid. His name is, is Sammy. And uh, Sammy's a, a seal. Okay. And uh, um, I took a picture of Sammy, and I sent it to Diego once, and then the next day, he had done, like, this whole rendition of Sammy, like, this this oh uh, this cartoon of okay. Sammy. And I just thought it was hilarious. And so I printed out stickers of Sammy. And then I put, last year when I sent out the calendar, a Sammy sticker enclosed all the envelopes. Sweet. And, like, the boxes had, like, um, the adhesive tape, and it said, you know, thank you from Sammy and Tom. <laughs> and it's just, like... And nobody mentioned it. Like, not a single oh. person was like, there's this weird seal <laughs> that I'm getting stuff from. But it, all, but it just, like, every time I would get, every time I would send the stuffed animal, all of a sudden, like, Diego would just make an image of it. And so there's, like, all this stuff on the record that means nothing to anybody, but it's hilarious <laughs> to me. So my whole family's on the record, and there's, like, pins of them, and you can, like, buy them, but... <laughs> I don't explain what they are, so nobody knows what's going on. But yeah, it's really fun. And Diego's crazy, and I'm crazy, and we just have a good time. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's, we're just having a laugh. So, where can people find out more about you? Uh, Tom Goss Music on all social media platforms, um, or TomGossMusic.com. So, nice. whatever, whatever you follow people, or harass people, that's right, <laughs> It's great. And I've got to ask you before I let you go, um, I've got to ask you about bears. Yes. <laughs>
bears got the best of me. I said, bears, I'm a fantasy. I said, bears ain't what I like. We do it all night, all right. Bears that don't discriminate. I take a call the chop to circumnavigate. Steal my heart to let it percolate all night, all right. What do you think about that now, like down the line from doing that a few years ago? I mean, it's been 10 years. Wow. I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. Because it was July of 2013. Oh, wow. That, so that must have been about when we met. And we, we did that photo shoot, like, when Bears, yeah. the week after Bears released. I think that was, like, July, wasn't it? Because it was at P-Town. It was. I released that video a week before P-Town. Ah. So that was the first time we met. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So, yeah, 10 years. Oh, fuck. We've aged. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Actually, I... you don't look any different. I was looking at you online, like, thinking about today. You look so the same as the first time I photographed you. Like, I mean... What is that, that all about? First of all, not true. Second of all, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I keep having to make these fucking calendars. <laughs> I think these calendars are, like, the only thing that keep me... Like, Yo. yeah, because I'm like, shit, <laughs> I got, I'm already thinking like, how am I going to plan my year to make this calendar <laughs> next year? Because I want to fucking move to Barcelona and eat everything. <laughs> I wrote Bears. I was performing a Bear Happy Hour in D.C. I was living in D.C. at the time, and Bear Happy Hour in D.C. was madness. Right. It was 1,500 bears every Friday. It was so fun. It was great. And I would always go there, and I was hanging out. It was super chill, and I was performing there, and, and I was just like, ah, I should write a song about bears for the show because it'll be really funny. Yeah. And I played it at the show, and people freaked the fuck out. <laughs> And then I like went on this Little Northeast tour after that. This would have been 2012, probably. Right. And every show I played that, people freaked the fuck out. And I was like, oh my God. And then it got me thinking. And there was a couple people doing bear content. There was like Freddie Freeman and um, Kendall Kelly. And they were doing bear content, but the budgets just weren't there. And so, so, and, and I love those guys. And, and I was just like, what if, what if there was like a bear content where like we really spent a little money and made it really slick and polished? Yeah. That's, I felt like that's what the community deserved. And there was, and it was just like, <clears throat> it, it would just, it just wasn't there yet. Yeah. And so I was like, the community deserves this. I love the community. I want to do this. And... Which I spent, then I just dedicated like the next year to making that video and like figuring out what would make it nice and great. And, and Aram um, Vartian and Michael Patrick Key, who we were, we were making a lot of videos together at the time, they directed it and they fucking crushed it and we put it out and it just exploded. Yeah. And I think, I think my kind of like sentiment was right. Like the Bears were getting bits of content, but it was always like, um, Content that I don't, I, I don't, I, I'm having a hard time saying it out loud because it feels like an, in, an insult, but I don't okay. mean it as an insult at all. But, but at the time, the the kind of tools to make really high quality um, video and audio. We take it for granted now because we can do it with this yeah. phone. Like at the time, that wasn't the case. And in order to make something of substance, you had to invest thousands of dollars yeah. into it. And, and as an independent artist, you can't do that. It's really hard to do that. So, so I just was like, I don't care if this takes a loss. I'm just going to do this because it's my gift to the community. I want the community to have this thing. And at the time, it was kind of like, it was just like whatever people could bundle together because anybody doing content for Bears was very, very indie mm. and had very low budgets. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. I feel like I'm talking in circles, trying to not, <laughs> <laughs> trying to be, trying to be nice, but explain the situation. No, no, I totally get it. I think, and I think that was why it was, 
so successful. Yeah, yeah. Because it was, well, number one, I think because of that love mm -hmm. that you put into it. But yeah, I think it was probably the first kind of thing of, of its type that was so beautifully produced. Exactly. And, yeah, really kind of honoured what you were trying to say and show. And people still, I mean, it's hard to remember 10 years ago, but people still were afraid to be gay. Yeah, yeah. Let alone, like, I like chubby dudes, you yeah, know? Yeah. But I think also, and it's very much like what I do with me in a way, it's kind of like, it was almost kind of, people were trying to be inclusive and diverse, but everything always, see, everything outside of the sort of gay mainstream always seemed to be like, oh, this is our sort of token mm -hmm. effort. Yeah. And I think sort of doing something, especially at that time, that kind of really challenged that yeah. was like so important. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's probably why it sort of was such a hook for people. I agree. And I, you, if you did it again today, it wouldn't be. No. Because you're, cause there's tons of people. I mean, Big Dipper puts out fucking yeah, yeah, amazingly yeah. beautiful videos all the time. There's like so many... So many bear artists out there, and they're like fucking great. Yeah. Because we, part of the reason, and now I want to take credit for it. Yeah. Part oh, of it, thanks, to oh, thanks to me. <laughs> no, because it, it did prove that there was a market. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. I mean, I mean, you also have to understand that the that the industry had spent ten years collapsing, and it was just pulling itself back together. Mm -hmm. And now it's all like niche markets, right? Yeah, you're really yeah, like everything's really targeted. Which were for a while, you were just like. How can I sell this to everybody in the world? And my goal was never to sell this to everybody in the world. My goal was just to to say like this is a thing just for these people. I know they're not cool to you. I don't give a shit about you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. only care about these people. And then the industry's like, hmm, you know. And now now that's what it is. And now yeah. they're all making the same content, but they have a million dollar budget, and I still <laughs> still have like eighteen dollars, and I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know why my money's on my watch, but it is. Well, you're doing it really well. Thank you, I appreciate it. And thank you for talking to me. No problem. I, I also want to ask, actually, um, yes. we've just done some photos. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Okay. How do you feel about potentially being a meat icon? Oof. It's it's a lot to live up to. <laughs> it's it's a lot to live up to, and I just hope that... Well, do I get a sash? You may get a sash. Oh, I may get a sash. <laughs> I just hope that I can represent the meat community... Um, in a positive and enriching way. I'm sure you will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> that was perfect. I hope it's still recording. It says recording. It does. What a mess. What a mess. I feel like I just said a million things no, no, it's at good the good. same time. It's all gonna be in the edit. <laughs>